bag lady. I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Ask Sarah, my weekly Q&A chat. Okay, so I just wanted to say hey to everybody jumping in on the chat. I saw Pamela, Priscilla had joined in before we started. Tara asked a question, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, just to let you know, if you have a question about anything sewing or bag related, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get to as many questions as I can live. Oh, speaking of Pamela, Pamela, um, you won my social Sunday giveaway a few Sundays back. Um, I still have your prize, so email me and I'm happy to mail that off to you. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Pamela Tabor. I hope I pronounced that right. Okay, so. Um, we have a new video for everyone this week, but before we get to the video, I wanted to address, I had a lot of emails coming in and also posts and comments in my Facebook group about uh, Free Spirit Fabrics closing and Tula Pink um, and other fabric designers that were designing fabric for Free Spirit Fabrics. Tula did a Facebook and Instagram Live earlier today to explain the issue. I debated whether I should talk about it tonight on the show or not because it's really it doesn't involve me and it's none of my business, but I just wanted to touch on a couple things that Tula mentioned earlier in her chat. So if you're not familiar with the issue, Coates & Clark is a company that makes lots of products, including thread, and they have a division where they sell modern fabrics called Free Spirit Fabrics, and they announced uh, yesterday that uh, they were closing out the Free Spirit Fabrics division. and. Lots of my favorite fabric designers designed for Free Spirit, um, Tula Pink, Amy Butler, uh, Jennifer Paganelli, lots of others, great fabrics. Um, I have to say that Amy Butler fabrics were the first fabrics I ever purchased uh, when I first started sewing as an adult. Um, she kind of got me on the road to bag making. Hers is the first bag pattern I ever sewed from. Her book called Style Stitches was uh, what really inspired me and kept me going with the bags. If you're not familiar, Style Stitches is a bag uh, sorry, is a book with all bag sewing patterns. There were 12 patterns in the book. Years ago, my friend Bree hosted a sew along on her website for this book, and so every month we made a different bag pattern for, from the book. So uh, I think I would have to say without Amy Butler, I never would be designing bag patterns or any of this. Tula Pink is my favorite fabric designer. I have tons of Tula Pink fabric behind me on these uh, shelves back here. Um, I'm lucky to call her a friend as well. She's always supported my work. Years ago she asked for, I think Acacia was the first fabric line that she asked for bags for her trade show booth called Quilt Market. Um, so I made two bags for that booth, I think it was two. I was super nervous because she was, uh, I don't know, I was a, a big fangirl of hers. So, and she's always supported me, always promoted my work to quilt shops and so I couldn't thank her enough so um, anyway the gist of Tula's talk earlier was that all the designers would be likely going on to find different fabric manufacturers to work with so Tula Pink fabric is not going away however the fabrics that I used on my woven Easter baskets which I'll tell you about in a minute these were both made with uh, free spirit solid, solids which were designed by Tula and the linings were from Tula Pink's All Stars fabric line. So the solids are available now. All Stars is shipping shortly. So All Stars was a line of um, polka dot prints called pom poms, stripes, and prints of Tula's most favorite, famous fabric designs in different colors. So if you like the solids or if you like the look of the Tula Pink All Stars, you should get on that and purchase the fabric because it won't be available for long and when it's gone it won't be reprinted because Free Spirit's closing. So any, anyway that was the issue that I've gotten emails about today and talking about in the Facebook group so nothing to cause any panic. Um, these people are not going away they're just they'll just be designing for different manufacturers going forward. So anyway my normal for format for Ask Sarah is that I show a sewing tutorial video and then I take questions at the end but tonight's video is about 50 minutes long, so I certainly don't expect you to sit through the whole sewing video, although you can. And so I wanted to take questions before we started the video, just so we can show the video and then the, the live show will end after the video. If you jump in in the middle of the video, 
Um, the free video for the woven Easter baskets will be, be available after the live broadcast is over on Facebook and YouTube, so you can find those at any time and also on my website. So let me get to a few questions and then we'll show the video. Okay, I did see one from Tara before we even started and it was a really good question. So Tara asked, do you think thin strips of cork would work to be woven in the basket? So in the video I'll be showing a method for using quilting cotton or any other fabric that frays when you cut it. If you would like to use cork for the baskets, you sure can. I would just cut them at half inch wide strips and you don't have to iron them or put them through the bias tape maker. You can just use the raw strips and actually it'll go a lot faster if you don't have to press them and turn them into bias tape. So if you're going to use cork, just use the same length of strips except half inch wide. Um, for the lining, you might want to use a different fabric, like maybe quilting cotton um, interface with Shape Flex, but for the outside of the bag, you could use cork fabric if you wanted to. Ozzy Bird wanted to know, is the foam that you use washable? Yes, it's actually washable and it can go in the dryer. So the foam that I use is by Annie Soft and Stable, which is a sew-in interfacing. I'm assuming the same case would be for the other brands of foam interfacing out there. Pallon also makes a foam interfacing and so does Bozel. But anyway, you can put the foam in the washing machine and it can go in the dryer. So my friend Annie, who's the creator of Soft and Stable, has, we've talked about it in the past, but she actually has a placemat pattern and being a placemat, you would expect that it would go in the washing machine and the dryer and it's actually safe to go in both and I've done it before nothing shrinks or changes, anything like that. So um, that's definitely a great thing, especially for bag making or in the case of the placemats. Um, another question, what fabrics can you not use for weaving the Easter baskets? Um, I think most fabrics would work. I think wool would be cute in this as well. The wool strips like the cork, you could leave raw. I made mine with quilting cotton just because I like having that fabric on hand. Batiks would work. so. A variety of fabrics would work for the woven Easter baskets. Linda wanted to know, is the cork strong enough to hold up to braiding for trim? Um, yeah, I would assume it can be used just fine in the Easter baskets. The cork fabric is thicker than the quilting cotton. It's about 0.08 millimeters in thickness, which is just a little bit thick, thicker than the glitter vinyl that I sell, but, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it still holds up brilli brilliantly for everyday use in a bag. I have another question coming through. Uh, my name is Crystal and I'm a bag lady. My friend gave me a mid-weight sew-in stabilizer. Can I use it in my bags and how? So I'm curious what uh, the mid-weight sew-in fe stabilizer feels like. Is it, <coughs> is it a fleece product? Um, because I would consider uh, ShapeFlex interfacing a medium weight stabilizer, but <coughs> It's not super thick. Um, I'm going to ask my husband for a drink of pop because <coughs> I'm getting over a cold and my throat's kind of, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, thank you. Um, anyway, if you want to leave me another question about that um, interfacing, and hopefully I can get to that if you explain a little bit more about what the interfacing feels like. <coughs> <coughs> Faith wanted to know, hi Sarah, just purchased the Juki TL2200 Mini. Can you tell me where you purchase your feet? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if you purchase the machine from a local dealer, or maybe a quilt or fabric shop, they should be able to set you up with feet. Um, it does use the same feet as the Juki TL2010. I have both machines and I, the feet are interchangeable. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. There's a lot of uh, websites online where you can find um, the Juki accessories. Uh, Sovac Direct is one of them, and SewingMachine.com is another. So you can check. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, you can check with both, and they both have great customer service, and they can set you up with the feet you're looking for, like maybe a Teflon foot or a zipper foot if you need it. <coughs> Karen wanted to know, do you use Scotch Guard or a different brand of fabric protectant? Yeah, I would definitely recommend Scotch Guard, especially if you're selling the bags um, or taking custom, custom orders. Um, I don't use Scotch Guard a lot just because my bags are, I don't want to say uh, show bags, but like I don't use a lot of them for very long just because I have so many, but Scotch Guard is definitely a great option. 
<coughs> ah. Uh, Paula wanted to know, do you buy your interfacing and foam by the bolt? If so, where is a good place to buy it? Um, I, I sure do. I buy my shape, Pellon Shape Flex by the bolt and um, my by any soft and stable. I actually, because I sell items on my website, I actually purchase them from a distributor wholesale. But you can find by the bolt products online as well. Um, I, I can't recommend a good source because it's been some time since I've purchased those retail, but um, maybe somebody else can comment in the in the group where they're purchasing uh, their bolts, uh, maybe at a great price. Um, Zena wanted to know, do you have a bad fabric experience? Um, I can't re recall a bad fabric experience, but I have a bad, I don't want to say teaching experience, but I don't know if you, if, if you were with me last summer, you might have heard this story, but I was in Ohio teaching at a quilt shop and I was giving a lecture and 10 minutes before I was scheduled to leave the hotel to go to the quilt shop for the lecture. I was putting my dress, my outfit on very last thing because, um, you know, I just, I don't know, I didn't want to get deodorant on myself or anything like that. So I was ironing in my dress last and I ironed a hole in the skirt, which you could see through the whole entire skirt and it was an iron shaped hole and it was like where my butt would be. And so um, I didn't have an extra dress with me to, to wear to the lecture and so all I had with me were um, like some ripped jeans and a t-shirt. I mean the t-shirt was a nice t-shirt at that but still not, not something I would normally wear to a lecture so that's um, my latest fabric mishap, not necessarily with fabric, but fabric on a dress, so um, still fabric. Um, all right, so we're going to get to uh, my sewing video now. Thanks so much for all of your questions. I just want to mention if you like my chats or if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit the share button. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, um, I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can share future videos with you. So, um, again, this is a 50 minute video, so if you're getting um, a little tired of watching or need a break, the video will all be, always be available after our live show on Facebook, YouTube, and my website. But anyway, the project is to make uh, these easy woven Easter baskets, and you can certainly make the Easter baskets in a solid fabric if you like, but I just learned how to fabric weave, and I thought it was pretty cool, so I'll show you how to do that in the video. So enjoy, and happy sewing. Hey bag lady, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness and today I'm going to show you how to make my woven Easter baskets. Fabric weaving is a lot of fun and you can put it on other bags or small accessories. So grab your supplies and let's get started. Before we cut out any fabric, you want to print out the cutting list and also the template. There's only one page of template and this is for the bottom of the Easter basket. If you'll notice, there's a one inch square and a four centimeter square on the page, and you want to measure either one to make sure that your pattern piece is printed out correctly because it's really important because we're fitting this circle into the sides of the Easter basket that either the one inch square or the four centimeter square measures exactly. So a couple tips for printing out pattern pieces. You always want to print using Adobe Reader. It's a free program to download to your device if you don't have it already. And you always want to print at actual size, so you don't want to have the checkbox checked for scaling or fit to page. It's got to be actual size. Okay, so go ahead and cut out your pattern piece, and you want to cut to the outside of the black line. And for cutting out the fabric, you want to reference the cutting list for which fabrics get cut out from what fabric or which interfacing. Okay, and if you'll notice this pattern piece has a dashed line on it, that'll be for cutting out the Peltex, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. So go ahead and cut out your fabric and interfacing, and let me show you how to attach the fabric to the interfacing. So I've got one of the lining bottom pieces, so that's my lining fabric, and this is the ShapeFlex interfacing. And one side of the ShapeFlex feels bumpy to your fingertips, and that's the side with the adhesive. So I'm going to go ahead and flip my lining piece so that it's wrong side facing up, and the side with the adhesive is going to go against the wrong side of the fabric. So I've got my iron set at the cotton setting and you just want to glide the iron over each area for a few seconds. You don't want to just plunk your iron down and leave it there because that will create iron shaped imprints in your fabric. So just keep your iron moving. 
And if you wish, you can use a little bit of seam if you'd like to. I, I normally recommend using a pressing cloth, but for the videos I don't, just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so after you've done, you've done um, setting that with the iron, you want to take your finger and try to peel back a corner of the fabric from the interfacing. And as you can see, mine is not properly fused, so just give it a few more seconds in each area. Okay, so you'll repeat the same process for the lining side panel. There's two rectangles that you'll want to set to the side for now. So there's one long rectangle from foam interfacing and then there's a long rectangle from ShapeFlex interfacing and there's a note for that ShapeFlex one in particular. We're going to set those aside because those are for reinforcing the weaving. So we need to finish the weaving first. Okay, so here's the exterior bottom and that one has actually three different types of interfacing. So foam interfacing, shape flex, and Peltex. So I promised that I'd show you how to cut the Peltex out because the Peltex is a bit stiffer. It's a little bit challenging to cut it on the fold. So first you want to cut that pattern piece out on the dashed line and you might want to make yourself an extra copy so that you can have one copy cut out on the dashed line and one intact piece. And we're going to use this to draw both halves of the piece onto the Peltex. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw around the piece and then I'll flip the, the paper piece over so that I can catch the, the mirror image for the other half of the circle. So I made this piece for the Peltex smaller to reduce the bulk in the seam allowance. So we're basically keeping the Peltex clear of the seam by cutting it smaller. It'll be a little bit easier to use getting it through your sewing machine. And the finished Easter basket will look nicer just because you don't have that extra bulk. Oops, let me grab my fabric scissors. Okay, so to attach this Peltex, first you're going to pull out your foam interfacing. The fusible side of the Peltex, you're going to center on top of the foam. And then we're going to take the shape flex. Again, the fusible side will go against the Peltex. So the fusible shape flex will seal that Peltex in along that outer margin, but you can hit the whole entire thing with the iron. If you're concerned that your machine will be able to deal with several layers of interfacing, you may consider omitting this Peltex from the bottom, but I really like having that extra stability that the Peltex gives because, especially if you're putting lots of things in your Easter basket or perhaps heavy things, the Peltex helps the basket from having the bottom bowed out underneath the weight of the items in the basket, so that's why I like having the Peltex in there. But like I said, feel free to omit that if you're concerned that your sewing machine won't be able to handle all of the layers. Okay, so once that's properly fused into place, I'm going to flip it so that the Peltex is face down, and I'm going to take my exterior bottom fabric and place it right on top. I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit. My foam's not fusible, but I'm just going to smooth it out with the iron. And then I'm going to grab some Wonder Clips and clip that into place. So we're going to take this over to the sewing machine, and we're going to machine baste the fabric to the foam using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And whenever I'm machine basting, I like to lengthen my stitch length because it makes the process go a bit quicker. So I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to four millimeters and then I'm going to sew around the outer edge an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. And I'm just smoothing the fabric out because I got I noticed I was starting to get a little ripple there.
Okay, so you'll just need a few things for the fabric weaving. So if you cut out all the fabric according to the cutting instructions, you'll have three different fabrics and you'll have nine inch by one inch strips cut from those fabrics and you'll also have a 30 inch by one inch long strip. So this is the base fabric and this is the sort of the background fabric for the weaving. You'll need a few other materials. You'll need the wefty fabric needle. So the wefty needle comes in two different sizes. This is the one inch size and this is the half inch size. We'll be using the half inch size because these will be half inch finished strips. You'll also need a bias tape maker and this particular one is made by Clover and again this is the half inch size of the bias tape maker. And I also have an optional notion for you, um, Wonderweb. I'll show you how to use that in a minute. But first, let me show you how I pressed all of my 30 inch strips. So you'll need a seam ripper to use with the bias tape maker. And you just want to slide the end of the fabric. I sort of make a U with it so that it fits in this U-shaped end of the bias tape maker. And then take your seam ripper or a pin is fine too and just get the fabric going so it comes out the other end. So then just take your iron and as the fabric comes out of the end of the bias tape maker, just go ahead and give it a press. And if you'd like to, you can use some steam, but you're going to press that all the way down. So I found that for those long 30 inch strips, this is the option that I prefer to do. It was just easier for me. But for those short strips, I liked using the interfacing or you can use um, that a bit of uh, washable glue stick. Okay, so you repeat this process for all 30 of, sorry, not all 30, all of the 30 inch strips. For those nine inch strips, if you prefer, you can use either the glue stick or I use this Wonder Web on mine. If you use the glue stick or the Wonder Web, you want to make sure to use your pressing cloth to protect your iron from any um, adhesive accidentally getting on it. So I cut a piece of the Wonder Web the same length as my strip, and I'm just going to go ahead and feed it into the bias tape maker. And again, you want to make sure you use um, a pressing cloth, but I'm going to skip that here just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And the same process applies, just run the fabric through the bias tape maker. And what the adhesive or the glue stick, if you choose to use a glue stick, what that does is holds the whole piece in place. I find that especially for the short strips for the weaving, it really helps having the whole strip held down so it doesn't come apart. As you can see, the one that I did with no interfacing, it's sort of, you know, apt to hang loose a little bit, but this one is held in place with the interfacing. So it's up to you, whatever your preference. Get all of those 9-inch strips pressed through the bias tape maker, and same thing for the 30-inch strips. Okay, first we're going to add all of the 30-inch long strips. So to make sure that I'm pinning them to this foam core board in place, and by the way, this is just foam core board that you can find at any office or art supply store. If you don't have any foam core board handy, if you'd prefer to just use maybe one or two layers of cardboard box, that's fine too. But I find the foam core boards really forgiving because of the foam uh, in the middle. But anyway, I'm going to start by pinning my 30 inch strips to the board and I found it helpful to take my ruler and just measure myself a starting line so that I could be assured that all of my strips were being pinned straight. Okay, so I'm just going to take some pins and I'm going to pin either end of the strip to the board. And then I'm going to just stretch the strip out a little bit, make sure it's on the line, and then I'm going to pin the opposite end. Okay, so just keep grabbing those 30 inch strips until you have all of them pinned in place. You want to make sure that the, the side with the two folded over edges is face down against the board.
Okay, so I've got all of my 30 inch strips pinned in place. And now we're gonna start weaving with the wefty needles. So we'll start on this left hand side and work our way to the opposite end. And you're gonna pull out your first nine inch strip. Okay, so to get it in the wefty needle, I'm just gonna weave it through the top hole and then just leave a little bit of a tail. Okay, so we're gonna work in a pattern of four different strips. So the first strip is going to go under two, over two, under two, over two. And as you weave it in that pattern, make sure these base fabrics are straight and make sure that the pressed under end is against the foam core board. And then you just pull it through. And then I'm gonna grab it off the end of the tool. And then this piece gets pinned in place. So again, adjust your strips. You might wanna, just for the first strip, take your ruler and make sure that you have the same amount top and bottom from the end of the board, and I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin that one in place. And again, make sure that the fabric is just a tiny bit taut. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my second strip. And I'm gonna go under one. Oh, sorry, forgot the wefty. going to go under one, over two, under two, and so on. It's every two. And again, make sure it's straight and make sure it's up against that first strip. Okay, and I'm gonna put a pin at the very beginning and at the end of the strip. And if you'd like to, you can also put a pin somewhere in the middle. I like to do that occasionally just to keep everything in its place. So I'm gonna put one in the middle right over here. Okay, so now grab your third color, your third strip. And again, I'm gonna stick it through the wefty needle. Okay, it's gonna go over two, under two, and then so on, every two. Okay, there's one more strip in this pattern. So let me grab my fourth strip. Okay, this fourth strip is going to go under one and then every two. Okay, so because there's three different colors of strips, but it's a pattern of four for the weaving, I found it helpful just so I can keep track and not get confused about which part of the pattern that I'm weaving next. I found it helpful to take a pen and because there's four strips, I just marked them A, B, C, and D. And then I'm just gonna keep marking them. So my next strip is gonna be A. So I'm gonna alternate. Again, it's gonna be A, B, C, D, and then I'm just gonna start over with the pattern. So you'll find it helpful to just glance at 
the corresponding letter so you'll know how to weave the next one. So my next strip is going to be A. So I'm going to go ahead and weave the west, rest of the way through and you do the same with your strips. Okay, once your weaving is done, we're going to take the pins out and move it over to some interfacing. So before you take the pins out, just make sure it's visually how you like it. If you need to adjust any of the strips, go ahead and just move them with your fingers. And then go ahead and take all of the pins out. Okay, so from here on out, please treat your weave very gently. So I'm gonna place, you can either place a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood or something. We're gonna actually flip this uh, weaving piece over. So I'm gonna use two of my pressing mats and I'm just gonna place them right next to each other. Okay. And I'm just gonna put my fingers underneath that board and flip everything over. All right, so now grab the piece of shape flex, which we put to the side earlier, and the fusible side, place it against the fabric and just sort of center it. It's not gonna cover the whole piece. Okay, go ahead and take your iron and fuse that in place. So the interfacing is gonna catch a lot of the fabric, but it's not gonna catch every piece because if you recall when you're weaving over and under, the pieces that are woven over are not gonna touch the interfacing. So that's why I mentioned going forward, be really careful with the weave piece when you're handling it.
Okay, so now I'm going to take that piece of foam and you might want to visually lay the foam down maybe where a certain piece is. So maybe I'm going to look for um, a horizontal piece right here to line mine up against just so the weave, weave pieces look straight. And then take a fabric marker and draw around the, the foam. Okay, so move the foam out of the way for just a second. Grab your scissors and we're gonna cut out along the lines. Okay, and all of this gets discarded. Okay, so we're going to place this weave piece right on top of the foam. And then grab some wonder clips. We're going to clip it in place all the way around the outer edge. Okay, we're going to take this over to the sewing machine. Again, we're going to sew with a length and stitch length of four millimeters, and we're going to sew around the entire outer edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
Okay, while you're still at the sewing machine, go ahead and change your stitch length back to your usual minus two and a half millimeters. And go ahead and bring those short ends so that they're right sides together. And we're gonna sew the short ends using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, press that seam open on the end of your ironing board and then bring it back over here because we're gonna quarter it. So again, being gentle of the weave, have the seam on one end and flatten the piece out and mark the opposing end on the top and the bottom. And then bring the marking that you just made directly on top of the seam. Again, on top and bottom, flatten it out and then mark both ends. So those will be the four quarter markings. Okay, so we're also gonna quarter marking the exterior bottom. So go ahead and flip to the wrong side and take out your pattern piece and align the pattern piece on the circle. And we're going to use the markings on the pattern piece to mark the four quarter markings. Okay, so now go ahead and take that piece and we're going to pin it right sides together. I see a little, of extra, a little bit of extra interfacing sticking out on mine, so I'm going to trim that even with the fabric as it should be. Okay, so now I'm going to match up those four quarter markings with the quarter markings on this weave piece. So I'm going to pin the fabrics right sides together. We'll do the four quarter markings first and then we'll pin the rest of the way around. So again, matching up the next quarter marking with the next quarter marking over here. And this seam over here is the quarter marking. So that, that will be pinned to the quarter marking on the exterior bottom right there. Okay, last one. And then once you have the four quarter markings pinned, go ahead and pin the rest of the way around. Okay, before we take this over to the sewing machine, I'm going to take my scissors and wherever there's a curve, basically the whole entire thing. I'm going to make little clips with my scissors that are an eighth of an inch high. And that will help because the exterior bottom is round and the exterior side is just a straight piece. And those little clips help the straight fabric ease through the curve. So go ahead and clip that all the way around an eighth of an inch high. And then we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew the pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I found it easier to sew with the circle facing up. And again, it's gonna be a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Because this whole entire piece is a curve, feel free to stop if you need to, to smooth out the fabric so that you're not sewing over a pucker on the underside. So when you stop, just put the needle down, lift the presser foot up, smooth the fabric with your finger, and then you can continue on.
and I usually like to check the opposite side just to make sure I caught both layers of fabric because you never know there might be a little area that slips out from underneath the pins so check both layers of fabric and then we're going to start working on the handle okay grab both of your handle pieces and place them right sides together go ahead and put some pins or wonder clips on there we're going to sew both of the long edges using a quarter of an inch seam allowance Okay, now we're going to turn that handle piece right side out. I'm going to use my fast turn turning tool, but if you have a different turning tool, that'll be okay in instead. Okay, and then go ahead and give that handle piece a good press. Okay, now pull out the piece of Peltex that's the Peltex insert, and if you'll notice, the insert is cut not as long as the handle. That's on purpose to keep the Peltex out of the seam allowance. And I'm going to use a bodkin to pull that Peltex through the handle. Um, you might want to use a safety pin or some other item, but I feel like the bodkin always holds on to the fabric that I'm pulling through my tube really tightly. So I'm just going to clip the bodkin on the end. Okay, so pull the Peltex just enough through so that it's centered on the fabric. See, I pulled it a little too far, so I'm going to go ahead and pull from the opposite end so the Peltex is centered and clear of the seam allowance. Okay, so I'm going to press this one more time, and then I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. You have a couple options. You can either top stitch both of the long edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to do that, but I'm going to also add a second line of stitching. So I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch away and also a quarter of an inch away. And I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters.
Okay, so now pull out the exterior of your basket and we're gonna attach the handle. So we're gonna use the two quarter markings that are on either side of the seam, so not the seam line. And we're actually gonna pin it so that it's to the inside of the basket. So the fabrics will be right sides together. So here's the quarter marking on the exterior and I'm going to center my handle and put a wonder clip to pin it in place. And the same thing for this other quarter marking on the other side of the seam. So here's the quarter marking and I'm going to center the handle on the quarter marking. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew the handles where they're pinned using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so if you lengthened your stitch length for the previous step, make sure you turn it back to your usual and, and mine is two and a half millimeters. Okay, now go ahead and pull out your lining side. We're going to assemble the lining the same way that we did with the exterior. So bring the two short ends so that they meet. We're going to pin those right sides together. Except this time we're going to sew using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, press that seam open on the end of your ironing board and again we're going to quarter the lining side. So flatten the piece out so the seam is on the one end and mark both the top and the bottom. And then we're going to bring that marking directly on top of the seam. Again flatten it out and mark both ends. Okay, we're also going to quarter the lining bottom. So again take your pattern piece and mark the wrong side of the fabric so that you have the four quarter markings. Okay we're going to pin these right sides together and match up the quarter markings. So pin the four quarter markings then pin the rest of the way around we're going to sew this seam all the way around except using an eighth of an inch seam allowance this time. Again, I'm sewing with the circle facing up. You want to make sure you have those little eighth of an inch high clips and this seam is going to be three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we're going to trim this seam in half and you don't need to measure it, you can just eyeball it. And by trimming the seam it just reduces bulk in the bottom of the basket. Okay, now we're going to turn that lining so that it's right side facing out. And you're going to place the lining right inside the exterior. You're going to match up all of the quarter markings. And you, you might want to have the seam against the seam or you might want to have it on a separate quarter marking just to reduce the bulk. I'm going to place mine on a separate quarter marking. So match up those four quarter markings first. We're going to sew this seam using a quarter of an inch seam.
seam allowance, except we need to leave an opening for turning the lining right side out. And preferably you want to leave your opening where there's no seam. So this edge would be a good place to leave an opening. I'm going to leave myself a marking over here just as a reminder. You want to leave at least maybe a four or five inch opening. Okay, now reach your hand through that opening in the lining and pull everything so that it's right side out and just be gentle with that weaving piece so that you're not too rough and snagging uh, one of the weaves. Okay, before we give this a good press, we're going to top stitch that top edge and then close that opening. So to do that, you can either press or finger press so that the fabrics are wrong sides together like this and put some wonder clips on them. And when we get to the edge with the opening, we're going to press that toward the inside by a quarter of an inch. And then when we do the top stitching, it'll seal that opening closed. Okay, so here's the opening right here. So we're gonna just turn that edge toward the inside by a quarter of an inch. And then same thing with the exterior. And the exterior might be a little bit challenging just because the weave design is sort of in your way just a little bit. Okay, we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine for the top stitching. Make sure you lengthen your stitch length to three millimeters, or at least I'm using three millimeters. Your machine might be a little bit different. Um, also for top stitching, I like to match my bobbin thread to the lining fabric. So I'm gonna switch out to a lighter, sort of a light green fabric for my bobbin thread, and I'm gonna leave my, my top thread sort of a, a darker blue like this.
Okay, so I did an eighth of an inch seam allowance for the top stitching, and if you'd like an additional line of stitching, you can also do a quarter. Okay, give your Easter basket a good press, and then it's ready to fill with Easter gra grass and gift. Thanks so much for sewing along with me. I can't wait to see your finished basket. If you enjoyed this sewing video, be sure to share it on Facebook, and if you're watching on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you make a woven Easter basket, please join my Facebook group and share a photograph of your finished project there. And remember, if I can do it, so can you. Hey bag ladies, thanks so much for hanging out with me tonight and watching my video on how to make the woven Easter baskets. If you jumped in halfway through, this video will always be available on Facebook, YouTube, and my website. I was trying to answer some questions in the comments while the video was playing, but I, I saw a few at the end that I wanted to get to. So I saw somebody asking about the scissors that I had in the video. I have a whole bunch of different scissors, but the ones that I was using in that particular video are Kai scissors, uh, model number 7205. I actually have two of these because I lost one while we were remodeling our first floor. I bought another pair and then they found, I found the missing pair, so Kai scissors. Um, this tool that I was using to turn the fabric right side out for the handles is the Fast Turn. I've got these on my website if you're interested. This is a half inch um, wide tube, so good for straps and all sorts of different things. I use this all the time. And I saw two ladies asking about my sewing machine at the end, so I threw my sewing machine up on the desk. Actually not through because this is like 50 pounds of metal. My machine is all metal. It's the Juki 2010Q, uh, sorry, Juki TL2010Q. I did a video about this machine a few weeks back, so if you're interested, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, um, check on my videos, past videos, and you can see the one about my sewing machine. I also have the Juki 2200 QVP Mini, which is basically the same exact thing. Um, workhorse machine can handle tons of layers, which I'll show in the video, so look up that video if you're interested. So that's the end of my live show for this week. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, to all my bag ladies out there, thank you very much. Um, we'll be working on lots of new videos in the future. I have it high up on my list to get to a free video for my Oslo craft bag. If you've never seen it, Google it. It's a free pattern. All you have to do is sign up for my newsletter. Um, but thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you again next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time for Ask Sarah. Happy sewing. Thank you.